Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing a CSS battle, except that I'm not going to be battling anyone except for myself. And today's video is going to be somewhat similar to my previous video in a sense that I'm going to be doing some programming challenges and I'm going to try to explain my thought process as I'm doing them. Something that's going to be different from last week's video is that this is a lot more visual so I'm hoping it's going to be a lot more interesting even for people who are not into uh, web development, programming and things like that. So what is CSS Battle? Well, it's this cool website where you can go and complete all these challenges. Uh, let's try and click on one of them. The idea is to replicate this image using HTML and CSS code. So here on this side you have this cool slider that shows you on the left your result, your image, and on the right the image that you're supposed to get. So that's pretty cool. Also down here you have the colors that are used in the picture so that you don't have to guess them. It's just way more convenient for you to just click on them and then copy them here in your code. As you can see this is the exact same yellow color on the right image. So when you're done with your code, you can go ahead and submit it. As a result, you'll get the percentage of uh, how well your image matches the right one. So for example, you can get like a 99.5% score. Uh, if you go to the leaderboard, you can see all the other people who completed this challenge and you can see, uh, well, Probably most of these people are going to have a 100% score, but what's different is the number of characters they use. As you can see, this guy Vincent used 266 characters. So the idea is that your code is as short as possible and also that the match is perfect. However, in this video, I'm not going to be focusing too much on the length of my code. I'm just going to try to do it as best as I can. Another cool thing about this website is there's all these battles and uh, sort of competitions that are organized from time to time. So uh, you can enter any of these competitions. There's also all sorts of prizes and rewards for the top players. And most importantly, it's a lot of fun. So without further ado, I picked out some interesting examples and I'm going to try and solve them today. Alright, so the first one is this image. It's called Windmill and it's a part of the overflow battle. I'll have a link for all the challenges I'm going to try today in the description if you want to try them out for yourself. But let's get started. I think I'm going to have two yellow circles and then two blue circles, but I'm going to have to hide the other half of the circles. So let's start off by deleting the comments and in the HTML I'm gonna say I'm gonna put the main body tag the body is gonna have this color and then inside the body I'm gonna have the main container which is gonna be this square And now for the container class, I'm just going to say border one pixel uh, solid white, just to have an idea where it is. And I'm going to say that the height 200 pixels and width is also 200 pixels. Now I'm going to try and uh, center this square in the middle. I'm gonna say display flex justify content center and also align items center. So that looks okay. That's gonna be the square, the, the main container where, where I'm gonna store my circles or actually half circles. So inside of this container I want to have or separate containers.
So this is going to be the main container or this main square. And then that main square is going to be display grid. And we're going to have four separate uh, containers or squares inside of it. So we're going to say uh, grid template columns. Columns is 50% and 50%. And the same thing for rows. Rows. And then we're going to have these child elements. And the child elements are, are going to be 100% of the height and 100% of the width. Okay, there we go. So now we have these squares where I want to place these circles. So then I'm going to say something like position relative for the square for this little square and for the uh, circle inside it I'm gonna say position absolute but it's also gonna have a border radius of 50% and let's just say the color for now is yellow. There we go. Now we just need to move the circle downwards. So we're going to say position absolute. And we're going to say top 50%. That looks about right. The child elements, I'm going to say overflow hidden and there we go that looks pretty good I am still not gonna remove the the white borders for the squares because I think they really help me and let me align all the elements correctly I'm gonna do that at the end so let's just repeat this process for all the other circles in the image I'm actually going to make a class for all the squares separately. So I'm going to say here top left and then here I'm going to say top right and so on. Because I want to position them differently. So down here I'm going to say top left and then I'm going to cut this part right here. And there we go. Now I can position all of them differently. Okay, uh, looks like we have an image that is fairly similar to the one on the right. I, I can see some minor changes to it. For example, I think this, the main square is a bit bigger. I'm not sure, but I'll take it for now. Let's go ahead and remove the borders. Um, where is it? This one. And let's also change the color of the two blue um, circles. And there we go. I think that's pretty good, if not perfect. Let's go ahead and submit. Hey, I got a perfect score. It's a 100% match. Well, we're off to a great start. Let's go on to the next one. All right, the next one is called Mountains. It looks like this. And it's from this battle called Margin. It's their number nine. I'll have a link for it in the description as well. But let's get started. So first of all, I think I want to have the main circle here. Let's start off by doing that. The border radius is going to be 50% and the background color is going to be yellowish oh that's that's a big circle let's make it 200 
that looks perfect. And now we just need to make the most difficult part, which is these mountains, these red mountains. So for these red mountains, I'm going to make two red squares and I'm going to rotate them 45 degrees. So I'm going to have the big and the small square. Uh, the, the class big and small is going to be the size of the, uh, the squares and also their position. Now, one thing I forgot is to put position relative in the circle because I want to position the squares in a specific position here. And I'm going to say here, absolute. There we go. Um, also, obviously, the circle needs to be overflow hidden, just like in the last example. And it looks like the circle needs to be bigger. So now at this point, it's all up to tweaking the right numbers and making them match perfectly as in the right picture. This is why the slider really helps and makes you notice all the small differences there are. So the perfectionist in me says that this is not correct. I can obviously see the the square move left and right, but I'm gonna leave it for now. Let's move on to the small square. This seems okay for now. I know it's not gonna be a perfect score, but let's go ahead and submit. It was! It actually was a 100% score. I wasn't expecting that at all. This is the third and final one for today. It's called Webmaker Logo. It's a part of the visibility battle. And it looks like it's gonna be a tough one. So there's a couple of things that I noticed here. I think the first thing is gonna be that I'm gonna put the position of the body to be relative and then all the triangles are gonna have the position set to absolute so that I can place them exactly the way they're placed in the image. Also, there's a CSS trick on how you can make a triangle. Uh, basically, the idea is that you make a div and you set the width and the height to zero, but you make the borders something like 100 pixels. And then you can set certain borders to be transparent. And when you have one border left, it would look something like this. It would basically be a triangle. I found a really cool animation that explains this process and I'm gonna put it somewhere on the screen so you can visualize how it works for yourself. But anyway, let's get started and try to implement some of these ideas. All right, so here we have the two triangles. Uh, obviously, they're not in the right position or the right size, but I think I'm just going to tweak that for now. And I also want to have the darker red triangle first, and then on top of it, I'm going to draw the other one and do the same thing on this side. So this would be the main element that I would draw first, and then this would be the child element. So that's how I'm going to try and do it. All right, I think I made some progress and made the positioning a bit better. Again, I'm trying to make this triangle first, the one that's behind. Also this one right here. So that's what I'm aiming for. Okay, it looks like the left side is working. Still not the perfect position, but that's okay for now. And looks like I got the right side working as well. My OCD is kicking in and telling me to make it all perfect and work on the size and the positioning. 
but I am not gonna do that and I don't want to spend too much time on this. So let's go ahead and submit. And looks like we got a 99.1% match. That's honestly a lot better than I expected considering the positioning as you can see. Anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you found it visually interesting and appealing as much as I did. And if you decide to try some of these challenges on your own, let me know how you did in the comments below. Also, if you enjoy this type of content, let me know so I can film more videos like this in the future. But that's it for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.